Okay. Hi, Friday people. Uh, hope you're well. I, I love Dire Straits. Now, this is not the iconic album, um, Brothers in Arms, although Brothers in Arms is one of the numbers on this particular compilation. Why is it significant? Not only is it a wonderful song, a tune, but Brothers in Arms marks the first time that a CD, this is what these are called, some of you may not know, uh, a CD sale exceeded, it sold one million copies, its vinyl version. And as such, Brothers in Arms killed the CD. Now, that was pretty significant, but for the CD itself, strangely, people thought that nothing would supplant it. We should know now that nothing is forever. Um, well, certainly, they thought that nothing would change the digital transmission of music, and I guess that's been true and has now moved into movies, but they didn't anticipate that the need to have a physical means of storing would change somehow, and it did, and it changed with uh, the invention of the iPod, incidentally move, moving music from Sony Philips from Europe and Japan to uh, California. And this, this is a 30 gigabyte model, of course. This would hold uh, all music anybody could ever possibly want. I don't think anybody uses these anymore, which is a shame because they're perfectly feasible, except they're quite heavy. And um, their replacement eventually, of course, is this wonderful thing, is the smartphone, excuse my protective cover, is the smartphone, which contains in itself more music, more movies than anybody could ever possibly want at half the weight. So that's how technology goes, and I'm quite taken by all of that, and I love it. I can hear you asking, what about books? This little baby, okay, with its wonderful bookmark, this thing weighs, probably, is my current novel, it probably weighs half a kilo, something like that. Gutenberg invented the moving press, I think, in 1400, so the longevity of the book probably really only took off in the what late 1800s when here in Europe the masses started to read first magazines and and uh, newspapers uh, and eventually novels. Uh, nobody thought surely that it would have such a long life, but it eventually got replaced by this thing. Um, there were have been other digital text readers, of course, and the iPad will serve perfectly well. But the lovely thing about the Kindle is that it's cheap, and that's why it's sold so well, and bought over um, so much of the digital world. Now, the books behind me, probably about half of those will go on to here, and that means you don't pay any excess baggage when you go on holiday, which cheap airlines are always trying to do, of course, to catch you out, to charge you more. I had to pay for a seat on an aeroplane, I couldn't actually fly without, fly without a seat, but I had to pay extra for it. What nonsense is that? So, so why all of this? Well, I think because the row of books says, this is me, this is my back history, this is who I am. I threw my workbooks out about 10 years ago. A friend said to me, you don't need all of those anymore, floor to ceiling. And I just skipped the lot. And I kept only my novels and poetry uh, and so on. And I think I like it. I'm going to keep it. All of that takes me to uh, the Blue Book of Runs or the Knowledge of London. Cab drivers, black cab drivers, that is, in London, who have to be licensed. And part of their getting a license is that they know the 320, I think, routes in inner London, which are contained in this little book called The Knowledge. So if ever you're in London and you see men riding around on very cheap redundant scooters with a clipboard in front of them stopping quite frequently, seeming not to go anywhere but to peer at their clipboard, they're learning by running them, by driving them, by motorcycling them, they're learning the streets of London. They're, they're called Knowledge Boys. And it's a tradition passed down here in London from father to son to be a cab driver for maybe 50 years. Good lucrative profession, challenged by technology because this wonderful thing, of course, contains not just the streets of London, but the streets of everywhere. 
and I did catch myself in the city of London about a week ago, head down with this while Google Maps, who of course know where I am and you are, any time of the day or night, taking me to a destination that I wasn't absolutely clear about. I could have used, I would normally have taken this in my rucksack, wonderful little map book of London, but I didn't um, because I knew it was on here. And that takes me to uh, the point of a story really, is on Tuesday I had an um, evening meal with my son in London and after we'd um, finished the trains in London at the moment absolutely chaotic while they rebuild railway stations and I had a tricky journey to get back to my train station and he'd already sent me a text message on here to say he'd been late he's got an Apple watch and he touched his Apple watch apparently while in a meeting spoke Siri like into it sent it to me by I received it as a text message and I thought that's pretty cool I wonder if I can do that with this and I haven't tried yet so he said, why don't you catch a cab? And I said, um, oh, well, I'll think about where I can walk to. A few minutes later, he said, well, your cab's here. I didn't ask for a cab. He said, no, I ordered a cab. I didn't see you do anything. He said, no, I just touched my phone. So we went down and sure enough, there was the cab driver, 20 something Asian guy from uh, East London, very nice, very chatty. Who took the most complex route it was a complex route it wasn't diddling anybody back to uh, the nearest operating railway station at, at 10 o'clock at night and i realized then that he from uber uber as you being prosecuted worldwide marks the death of the black cab in london and those generations of of fathers and sons rarely a woman who have been cabbies and I'm sure that's true worldwide. And so technology undoes one generation and two generations and three generations of work people and introduces something else. I'm sorry for the families, of course, but I know from history that a new technology, while doing away with loom workers or steam engine drivers, actually in the end creates more work than existed beforehand. It's a bit of a conundrum, but it's true. So with that thought, plenty of work for bright, adaptable, smart people. Oh my God, will they invent, I wonder, a robot teacher or head teacher or to do the kind of thing that I do, which depends on interpersonal <laughs> skills <laughs> and lots of knowledge up here and sometimes being a bit savvy. Well, I wonder they may, perhaps I should think about retiring. Meantime, it's Friday night. Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Enjoy your technology. And I'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye.